today in this video uh, we are going to learn that how we can implement json web token authentication in our laravel apis that is also known as jwt authentication so to achieve this the package that i'm going to use is the php open source saver jwt auth and i will also mention the link of this uh, repository in the video description so in this uh, repository if you scroll down you can find the documentation heading and under this documentation heading there is a link for complete documentation so you need to go to this link i will also add this uh, link so as you can see uh, if you see from the left side bar there is uh, there is a laravel installation option so let's go to this option and then you can find the complete installation so to install this first of all we need to run this command so let's copy this and let's open the code editor and let's open new terminal and in the terminal uh, you just need to run this command to install this package into your uh, project so it will just take few seconds to install it depends upon your internet speed as you can see it has installed now after this uh, in the documentation as you can see if you are using laravel 5.4 or better than laravel 5 then you you also need to add this package into this providers array of your app.php file but i am using laravel 8 so i just need to publish the configuration directly so let's copy this command and let's open the code editor again and let's paste this command here and after this we just need to run the last command that is the php artisan jwt secret so let's open the code editor and first of all let's clear out the terminal and let's paste this command here basically this command will uh, generate the jwt secret into your env file so let's run this and as you can see uh, jwt secret set successfully and if i go to my env file and scroll down as you can see this is the key has been generated with the help of the command <coughs> so after this we need to connect our database uh, uh, to our application so let's go to the localhost php my admin and let's create a new database let's say db and let's create it and let's go to the env and let's add the database name in the database credentials let's save it now let's open terminal again and let's run php artisan migrate and this will migrate all of the migrations from your project to your database and if i go to the database and refresh the database <coughs> as you can see all of the migrations all of the tables um, migrated into our database now we have successfully stalled the package and connect our application to the database so what we uh, need to do we need to make some changes so the first change uh, is in our auth.php file that you can find in your config folder and then as you can see this is the auth.php file so in this file the first thing you can see is the defaults array so in this default array you need to change this guard name from a uh, web to api and after this if you scroll down there is another array with a name guards so in this array you need to add another guard with a name api and this will be an array variable and the first variable in this array will be a uh, driver and the driver that we uh, need to add is the jwt because we are uh, uh, we have installed this package and we are using jwt driver <coughs> and after this uh, the second variable will be provider and the provider will be users now let's save this now after this you just need to open the users model and make some changes in your users model so the first change you need to uh, make in this users model you need to implement a interface and the interface that you need to implement is the jwt subject that comes with the package that you have installed 
now after implementing this spec uh, this interface uh, you we need to override two functions so the first function we need to override is the uh, get j uh, wt identifier and in this function we just need to return with the help of this keyword a key function that is get key function and after this the second function we need to add is the get jwt custom claims and in this function you just need to return an empty array now let's save this so we have done our changes that we need so we are ready to go to make our controller and write our authentication logic so let's open a new terminal and let's make a controller with with the help of the php artisan make controller and the controller that i'm going to add um, will be in the api's uh, api folder and the controller will be auth controller because i'm going to handle all of the authentication logic into this controller now after creating your controller let's go to the http then controllers folder and as you can see the api folder has been created and then the auth controller has been added now in this controller first of all what we need to do we need to uh, make a constructor so let's add a constructor over here and in this constructor we need to add the middleware <coughs> so let's call the middleware function and in this middleware function you just need to add the auth api middleware and after this you can also uh, pass another array variable and in this array variable you just need to add the accept variable and this will also be a uh, array variable and you can just uh, say the login and then the register so what we are saying the auth middleware will be uh, we are uh, adding the auth middleware uh, to the to this controller but we do not want to add this auth api middleware uh, to the login and register function now after this let's make the register function to register the user with the help of apis so this will be our register function and this function will accept the request and first of all we need to validate the upcoming request so let's call the validate function on this request and in this validate function we need three things to register our user the first thing the name of the user that should be required and then the email of the user that should also be required and that should also be in a email format and after this uh, we can uh, say the password we, we need a password obviously to register the user and that that is also required and that should also be of minimum eight characters now after this uh, we need to register the users because we have validated the uh, data now let's make another variable with a name user and let's call the user model and let's call the create function and in this function we can pass the name of the user and then the email of the user and then the password of the user now let's save it so what we have done we first of all validate the uh, coming request data and then we just register the data uh, the user into our database now let's create another function with a name token and let's call the auth api and let's uh, call the auth class because now we need to log in this registered user so let's call the login function and in this login function you can just pass the user variable that you have created 
so after this we can just return our response because we have done the uh, registration and authentication and this response uh, will be returned in a JSON format so um, in our JSON format we can pass the status so let's say it will be a successful status and then the second thing we can pass is the message so let's say user registered successfully and after that we can also pass the user that we have registered and we can uh, pass the user details with the help of user variable and after this we can also pass the token of the user of the authentication and that comes in the token variable now let's save this now uh, we have write the logic to register the user and we return our response now we need to make uh, the route for this function so in 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 normal application you work with a web.php route but in apis you work with api.php so let's go to the api.php file and let's remove everything from here and let's create our first route and this will be the post request because we are storing the data with the help of the uh, upcoming request and this will be the register request and then let's call the auth controller and the function that we have created is the register function now let's save this now let's run our application and let's test this register api so let's run php artisan serve now uh, to test the api we need to use the postman tool so let's open the postman so this is our postman software so let's open a new tab here and the api that we are testing is uh, the post request and let's copy the application link and let's go to the postman and uh, let's paste the link in this uh, text box and after the uh, link of your application you can just say slash api and then slash the route that you want to test so we need to test the register route that we have created now if i click send here i should get an error because i didn't uh, pass anything uh, in the headers and in the body so let's say uh, uh, click send And as you can see, uh, it is returning the status of 200, but it is uh, returning a HTML page. This is because we didn't add anything in the headers. So as I said, we need to add something in headers. So what we need to add, so uh, we need to add in the accept in the key and in the value, we need to uh, pass the application JSON. Now you need to go to the body. Now if I click send again, then I should get the validation error and as you can see the API is working and we are getting the validation error that we have added that we have uh, added in this uh, register function the name field is required the email field is required and the password field is required so um, you need to go to the body and you need to select the raw and then you need to select the uh, JSON and in this you just need to uh, add the name email and password in a json format so let's uh, first of all pass the name let's say salman and then the email let's say salman at the rate gmail.com okay so this should be uh, the colon and after this the password of the user and let's say I will pass the password 1234 and click send then I should get a validation error as you can see and it says the password must be at least eight characters so let's say one two three four five six seven eight nine and let's click send now the user should be registered and as you can see 
now we get our response that is success response and a message user registered successfully and the user details that has been registered and a token so this is the response that we have returned in our register function this so this is how the authentication works now we need to add another function that is login function because we have added the register function so let's go to our controller again and let's make a function for login functionality this will be login function and this should also accept the request in the parameter and first of all as we have done in the register function we need to validate the request first with the help of validate function and in the login we just need two things the first thing is the email of the user and that should be required and the second thing we need is the password because uh, for the login we just need two things and the password should also be required now after this we need to authenticate the user now after validating our data we need to add um, uh, the authentication so let's create a variable uh, credentials and let's get the credential with the help of request only function and we just need to get the email of the user and the password of the user now after this uh, we can just uh, authenticate the user let's add the token variable and let's call the auth class to authenticate the user and let's call the attempt function and in this attempt function you can just pass the credentials a variable after this uh, you also need to add an um, uh, if logic so what we need to add here uh, so we need to say if the token isn't generated that means the if this authentication fails so we need to return our response so let's return the response and the response will be in JSON format and we can just say the status is error and the message will be log in failed so if the token doesn't generate it that means the login failed now if this token uh, generated so we just need to return our response here and that is also in json format as we have done before so first of all we need to uh, send the status and it will be the success state response successful response and then the message and let's say logged in successfully now after this we can just pass the token of the user with the help of token variable now let's save this now le again let's go to the api.php file and let's create a route for the uh, login uh, function and this will be also the, the uh, post request and this will be for login and let's call the auth controller class and let's call the function here that is login now let's save this now again go, go to the postman and let's test out the login um, route so let's open new tab and this uh, will also be the post request and let's uh, copy the link of the application and instead of register now we I need to test the login route now as I said I need to add the accept keyword in the headers and in the value I need to add the application JSON and if I click send here I should get the validation error as you see the email field is required and the password field is required so let's uh, pass the password and email in the JSON format in the body <coughs> as we have done in the registered um, route testing so if I uh, say Salman one to three at the rate gmail.com so this 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 user doesn't uh, exist in our database so if I pass wrong credentials I should get the uh, 
validate i should get the uh, er, er, error response and let's say password 12345678 and let's click send now i should get login field as you can see so this is because i provided the wrong credentials so if i provide the correct credentials that is salman at the regime.com and then click send i should be logged in so as you can see now we got the successful uh, status successful response login successfully with a login token so this is how you can implement the jwt authentication in your laravel application with the help of apis and i hope that it will help you to implement the json web token authentication and if you have any questions or any queries or any problem related to this then you can ask me in the comment box